So who are you? Uh, I'm since, I, since I already introduced you. <laughs> I'm the co-founder of uh, Stack Overflow, which is now the company Stack Exchange, 90 different vertical websites. Uh, um, obviously, Stack Overflow for programmers is the big one. Uh, but the Stack Exchange network is the fastest growing. So it's up, I think, 350% in the last year yeah. in traffic, number of unique users, 90 different uh, websites in different verticals. And uh, yeah, so that's Stack Exchange, the company. Um, also, we're here at TechCrunch, so, um, so I launched another product called Trello, uh, which is uh, project management, it's a web-based project management. Yep. Really simple with little cards you drag around. Uh, turned out to be really popular. It's we beautiful. It. We launched it a year ago. Um, everybody's using it now, yeah. 700,000 uh, signups. Uh, and uh, it's really cool to come back to TechCrunch and just to bump into people and they're like, oh, I use Trello, and to see people like already using it you know, one year later. It's, a, it's an awesome product. Um, Thanks. With, well, uh, where do we want to go? Because people can know who you are and see yeah. lots of interviews with you. Um, and you're you're such a great um, programmer advocate. I like I like talking to you about company culture, but uh, okay. Sure, let's talk about company culture. You know, you're building a new office, I heard. We are um, Stack Exchange. Uh, we just rented a new office space in uh, Manhattan. Uh, 30,000 square feet, so. How many employees do you have now? Jeez, uh, we have 70 employees at Stack Exchange right now. Uh, we have offices in Denver and London, uh, so if you're looking for a job, um, and, and actually we'll hire developers anywhere in the world. Because uh, uh, developers and community people are, you know, their job is 100% online. Um, the main office uh, uh, is in New York, we have sales offices uh, in Denver and London that are expanding very rapidly. Um, and then in New York, uh, in, Mar in March, we hope to be moving into this new space, 30,000 square feet. Um, you know, for the first time, I kind of have an opportunity to get a really big space and make it kind of a dream programmer uh, space. You know, at Fog Creek, we, we built that really cool space, which I think you may have yep. uh, visited us. Uh, yeah, we had a shows. separate video where, where you have offices for each programmer. Yeah. That's why I like talking to you, because um, you, were, you, you came out of Microsoft and you understood um, how to get people in the flow state and get them productive. Right. And that's keeping really what it's about. It's like um, eliminating the interruptions, getting people in flow. Um, you know, this idea that everybody is still really psyched about it. I don't know how much I've been, you know, screaming it on course for 12 years now, saying you've got programmers in a noisy space that can't concentrate. They need to concentrate. If they get distracted, it may take them days before they get back, you know, into the flow, uh, into the sort of the deep dark uh, uh, space they need to be. You know, when you're programming, 100% uh, of your efficiency comes from keeping a lot of things in your head at once, like keeping all those facts and juggled in your head at once, because uh, that's what makes you really fast. There's all kinds of stuff you need to know, how to call a function, what the variables are, the local variables you're dealing with, you know, all those nested loops that you just nested, like, you know, where am I in, in, the, in that map? What does my data look like? What do I need to do to it? And so that's like 14 little things that you have to remember details. You know, what's that variable name? How do I spell it? And if you can remember that all in your short-term memory and yeah. kind of pull it forth, um, then you'll program really fast. If you can't remember it, you'll have to look it up. And every time you have to look it up, you have to stop what you're working on, scroll back, try to find that thing, yeah. scroll forward. It's really, really easy to get kind of confused about that stuff. So everything we do about programmers is a part of that short-term memory so that they can work really fast. Because it's, you know, it's like 20 times faster. So, you know, one thing is the big screens. If you can have gigantic monitors with lots and lots of code on them, the chances that you have to scroll are minimized. It's likely to be on, on screen right there for you. <clears throat> so uh, uh, if you can, uh, now an interruption is like, boom, you're juggling 14 balls and they're all on the floor. And you got to pick them up and start getting them in the air one, one at a time again. And uh, I, that, that's what we're all about. It's, like it's not just programmers that work like that. You know, I used to work at a camera store and, and I was paid on commission. So anytime I had to look something up, it was slow. Yeah. That was money. Yeah, you're just doing that the guy might walk away or whatever. It's, no, it's, it's, he would sit there, but it, it was money. Right. Because I, I could only sell two things an hour instead of three. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, you know, that's, that it, comes it out. Really being so being able to kind of memorize the stuff and be able to I memorized 3,000 SKUs. You're kidding, wow. So I never had to look something up. Sweet. So I could get more sales per hour and get my, my wage up. And, and look where you are now. <laughs> look where I am now. I heard that the last camera, the big cameras changed and closed down now. Ritz camera's closing. That's kind of not a... Yeah. Funny, uh, well, the whole retail, we could talk about retail. Um, so, uh, yeah, so private offices, we've got hexagon shaped yeah. offices uh, in, the new, uh, in the new space. So hexagon, we hope, is a really efficient space. You can pack a lot of them in, and you can still put a, you can put a person in the office, and then if you need temporarily to expand, 
uh, you can move the, the desks out to the walls and actually put, fit two people in a sort of single hexagon office. Um, and, you know, and glass doors that they close. Uh, so you, you can get, get quiet. Your social activity done during lunch. Uh, yeah. You know, we have we're gonna have a great cafe. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to force everybody past the cafe when they come into work on their way to the bathroom, etc. They'll have to walk past the cafe and socialize and sort of have all that serendipity of meeting other people. But that shouldn't be happening when you're trying to code. Yeah. Uh, at, at Rackspace, we're open plan, but we have two sides: a noisy side and a quiet side. Right. And yeah. all the engineers are in the quiet. wall between them, right? Yeah, there's a wall, yeah. So, and uh, yeah, you really sense it. You know, uh, when I first saw Rackspace, they had uh, light and dark, and oh, yeah. as an engineer, you, you can choose. choose. Yeah. And of course, all the engineers go go dark because they have these big ass monitors and want to see just stare right. at the code. They don't and, want to be distracted. And, yeah. Well, it's not just yeah glare yeah. and uh, eye strain, right? right? Staring in those monitors, right? So. You're now growing from 50 to 100. What's that like? Because that, that's a, a paradigm shift for building a company, I think. Uh, I, yeah, I think it is. Uh, so this is the first company I've had, it, I've had where uh, we really have a big sales team that's growing very fast. And the sales team is, you know, even though every person is an individual and they're all you know, wonderful flowers, the sales team is somewhat monolithic, right? Yeah. It, it sort of scales with like, all right, I need six more bodies. <laughs> And I need them to, you know, they all have sort of a minimum thing that they have to accomplish, but when we get six more, we can make that many more phone calls a day. And um, running that part of the company feels very different than, you know, in the early days where you've got every individual is different, everybody has to know everything about what's yeah. going on. The sales team is much easier to grow, it's much more easier to compartmentalize. You can just sort of say, all right, you, you eight people, you work for that sales manager, and I don't even have to know who you are. Sadly, I don't know every, every individual in the company anymore, but. Uh, uh, I will, I'll try to get to know them, but it, it, it just, yeah. it's not like at that small scale where you kind of intimately have to work with your area. No, I, I've person. heard that, that between 50 and 100, that's where you start shifting yeah. to not knowing everybody at, on yeah. a deep and level. A and when you go over around. 300, then it really shifts. And know, it's but, really weird. And you start, at some point you get to the size where you assume that you don't know other people in the company. Yeah. Like if I see you and you work for my company, I probably don't know you. And that seems like a really weird thing. That hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Um, Do you, do you, you know, lots of people look to you for mentorship. They, they read your blog over the years and, and talk to you on Stack Exchange. Do you have mentors that you go to or to study, you know, how do uh, I get to the next level and do it uh, right without screwing up? I do all the time. I, 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 that's what I'm doing this week. I want to talk to some people who are kind of been heroes of mine. Uh, so I've got some meetings set up with uh, people that I'd like to kind of, kind of hear from and get advice from. Yeah. Uh, I, I sort of have, you know, you know I've got sort of heroes. I always like Richard Branson for some reason. Uh, I guess the new Richard Branson is Elon Musk, but I like Richard Branson better. What can I say? Yeah, <laughs> he's like more more of a superstar to me. Uh, you know, he started an airline. I'm, I love airlines. Uh, I, I think that's really cool. Um, and a music company, and he made sort of a lifestyle brand around that. Uh, so there's definitely uh, uh, all kinds of people I look up to. Uh, you know, and, and always want to learn from. And it's it's hard to be a CEO. It's just confusing. You know. <clears throat> you've, at this point, you've hired people to do all the work in your company, yeah. and then you're free to just sort of, you know, you could micromanage every single person, but that's not what you're supposed to do. No. Uh, you really have kind of a blank, an unbelievable blank slate to work with in terms of your time, what you spend time doing things. Is it, is it a hiring? Is it branding? What, what do you think a CEO um, at, at a 70 person you know, uh, company well, does? Okay, you're, so you're the keeper of the vision. So you're the person who sits there and every once in a while when you see people sort of drifting off from what your vision is, you shadow people and say, remember, the vision is X. And that is half X. We don't do half X, but we don't do Y. Uh, so that's one kind of important role. Um, number two, uh, obviously hiring and recruiting. And number three is not running out of money. Not running out of money is not that hard these days. <laughs> uh, it hasn't historically been hard for us. Uh, it's actually because we make a lot of money. Yep. Uh, it, it, and um, um, you know, in the current funding environment, I can't imagine anybody really has a, a lot of trouble with running out of money. Uh, uh, hiring is obviously. Uh, uh, I hear it still. It's, it's it's still tough to raise. You know, it's not you don't just time. walk into somebody's office and walk and out with four million dollars. You know, one thing I, I tell people, and this is my, I, I feel like this is my advice to entrepreneurs, is if you feel like you're 
beating down the door is too hard to raise money. If it's hard to raise money, stop. Like, don't work on that. Because um, you may, uh, raising money should either be far off a log, in which case you should do it, because you're going to get great deals, you're going to get good investors, you're going to get good mentor investors, you have people you want on your board, you're going to have a choice of who to take money from, and you're not going to lose control of your company. Uh, so, so go ahead and do it. It's easy to raise money. It's hard to raise money. You're going to fight like crazy. You're going to spend months and months and months on the road trying to find one person who will finally invest in you. And when you find that one person, you know, they may be a pain in the ass and they may drive a really hard bargain because you don't have a whole lot of choice. Not only that, but, and correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. entrepreneurs tell me there's money and then there's the right money. Yeah. You know, there's, you want Ron Conway's money because, not just because it's money, but yeah. it comes with Ron Conway's network. Right, it's, or... it's, it can be more valuable. Some VCs are better than others. Um, you know, VCs may be more appropriate for you or less appropriate for you. And you definitely want to have a choice in who you take the money from because you take the money from the wrong person and they'll have different goals than you. And you know, there's a million different ways they'll drive you crazy at running the company. And uh, the money isn't really worth it that much. So if you're um, if you're finding yourself beating down too many doors and you're not, you know, everybody isn't calling you back, uh, then just wait. You know, go work on your product for six more months. Dig in with the ramen noodles and the friends and family and whatever, and just try to get some more traction and try to get to the next stage so you can raise money in a much more uh, comfortable position. What, what's happening with Stack Exchange? What, what's the numbers looking like? Is it still going um, nuts like it was last time I saw uh, it? It is still going nuts. Uh, we are, uh, again, most of the metrics that we look at double every year. Um, the overall uh, traffic growth and so forth, we're at 50 million uh, global uniques. There's that many programmers uh, in the world? Uh, no, actually, that's just Stack Overflow. So, right, Stack Exchange is now gone way beyond programmers. It's probably, we, we, we believe there are 9 million programmers in the world. Of those 9 million programmers in the world, 20 million of them visit Stack Overflow every month. Uh, so I don't know where the extra 11 comes from. But the 9 million people like you is it just to you know, see what people are talking about. Yeah, we land on that home page by mistake or something. But, uh, uh, you know, what, what it is is there's a broader audience, right? There's people like you, there's people that are making an HTML page, there's people that are just kind of tinkering and trying to put something together. Uh, and uh, they don't really see themselves as programmers. There's you know, scientists that need to write code to, to analyze or run an experiment, uh, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. So, um, I know you gotta go, so yeah, I, I gotta let you go. I could talk to you for hours, because you, you're like the done. spiritual, one of the spiritual leaders of the New York startup scene. Just well, for one cool minute, be, uh, tell, tell me what's going on in New York. Um, a, lot of, a lot of cool companies, Techstars is turning out a lot of uh, really neat companies that are all worth uh, looking at if you hear about a Techstars New York company. Uh, definitely pay attention to that. Uh, the company that I like, uh, I'll, just, I'll just mention one, Lore. Uh, they used to be called Course Kit. They changed the name to Lore because they got the Twitter handle, learn at learn. I don't know why. L-O-R-E dot com. It's a social network for college students. I don't know where I've heard that before. Um, My son's going to college this, this fall, so. But it's, uh, it's, it's, it's around the educational experience. It's yeah. not for socializing and dating. It's about, like, hey, I took this class, and I took that other class with a professor. You got the professors putting their homework online and reading material and all that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, Gangbuster, great entrepreneur. So, uh, lore.com. Very cool. Thank you so much. Where do I learn more about what you're doing? Uh, uh, you can start Joel on software.com. You can go to trello.com, T-R-E-L-L-O.com if you need uh, project management. And of course, stackexchange.com. You all know about Stack Overflow, so I won't send anyone there. Thank you so much for coming, and uh, have a good TechCrunch. Nice talking.